Okay. Uh, shoot. Still gotta get. Still gotta get my shoes on. Anyway, um, <clears throat> what is good, everybody? And happy new year. It is the Godfather of VR, the ageless one of the man, Lincoln Clay, and we are back, hanging out with you on New Year's. And originally, I was going to stream a set of course of only on PS5. But being that I wanted to talk about PSVR 2, so this is going to be a kind of a two-in-one uh, podcast slash, you know, doing some races. I thought it would be appropriate to play a game that I do be- that I do believe will get support on PSVR 2. Um, I've talked about this before that I said, of course, the competition on PSVR 2 doesn't appear as if it's going to happen. Being that the dev directly answered one of my questions before when I asked him if uh, I said, of course, the competition on PS5 would get VR support on PS5 and his exact words were uh, too many resources. The console's not strong enough. Uh, in the case of um, this game here, GT7, I do believe it's everybody that's kind of following PSVR 2 kind of closely that's been in the VR as long as I have feel the same way that I do. They pretty much figure that it's a given that this game is going to get a VR support. It's just a matter of when Sony decides to announce it. So I understand that um, I guess there's going to be something at CES uh, coming up. What's today? The 1st? On the 4th, which I believe is Wednesday. Um, I guess Sony is supposed to show something, I think, VR related. So some people are speculating that's when they might formally announce that uh, GT7 would get VR support, which would be beautiful. And I'll say that when PSVR 2 hits... Somebody on PC is going to find a way to make that headset work on PC. Um, And if it works on PC with all the same features that it has on uh, on PSVR uh, on PS5, um, that's probably going to be my PC headset. Mainly because if somebody can get the eye tracking to work on PC, that would allow me to crank my settings all the way up and it wouldn't tax the PC. You know, it wouldn't tax the PC uh any harder than you know what what's it being taxed now and i would have uh full clarity if someone can get it to work vr uh, hdr support uh i don't expect the head the uh head haptics to work if on pc because it would probably take um someone to add the add the haptics on pc so uh, please excuse the flickering you see of my green green screen behind me, green curtain, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I did not want to talk about, start talking about PSVR until I can say it one of two ways. Um, and that is, it's officially coming next month. It's a full 52 days away. But when I say the PSVR 2 is coming next month, it doesn't sound so bad. It doesn't sound like we have to wait a terribly long time. Oh, that transparency. I'm going to have to fix that. Give me a second, folks. I got to play with something. (laughs)
Oh, uh, that made it even worse. Still trying to play with the pan transparency settings so I don't look so much like a ghost. So give me a second. Again. That's a little bit better. So we'll just have to go with that. This shirt's so bright. <laughs> it looks like a light. So yeah, we are a full 52 days away from PSVR 2. Uh, I'm really excited about it from the standpoint of um, once PSVR 2 is in full swing, that is going to start developers shifting back in the direction of making premium games uh, for PSVR, PSVR 2, and PC VR. Uh, this, the, the current generation, or I'm even going to go on a limb and say, go on a limb and say uh, last, last generation, because right now I feel like if you want to call it a generation as far as VR goes, I would call this the standalone generation. Uh, so, um, Last generation, when we were getting a lot of PC VR titles, um, a lot of the games on PC VR would not have run on on the PS4 uh, in the current PS VR because uh, the consoles just simply wasn't strong enough. Um, but now with PS5 having the power of a mid-range computer, in my opinion, I believe the PS5 has the power of a 2070, along with some of the features that the headset has, uh, eye tracking, eye gazing, HDR support. Uh, I think they'll be implementing um, something similar to NVIDIA's DLSS. I think all those features combined is going to put PSVR 2 in a situation where um, if devs port from PC to PSVR 2 or vice versa, I think they'll only have to make, you know, minimum tweaks to the ports. Um, I think a lot of games on uh, PSVR 2 are going to look pretty damn close um, to PC. Hell, one game I even dare say after the fall is uh like a it's after the fall is like a, a co-op zombie shooter. I think they might have multiplayer on it now. This game is crossplay between Quest PC and the current PS PSVR. It's also coming to PSVR 2 and it's going to be in 4K. And I've seen a trailer of the enhancement that they made where they go into PSVR 2. And honestly speaking, on PSVR 2, it might be the best version of that game uh, in terms of visuals and um, immersion. So, also picked up Resident Evil Village. It's on sale. Uh, it might still be on sale for 20 bucks. So, if that's a game you are looking to play on PSVR 2... Uh, I would advise you to pick it up now while it's on sale for 20 bucks because it's going to get the VR uh, it's going to get the VR patch, whatever you want to call it, free. And I'm led to believe that as we get back closer, as we get closer to the launch of PSVR 2, they're probably going to jack the price of that game back up to 50, 60 bucks. So I would jump on it now while it's uh, 20 bucks. And uh, when PSVR 2 releases... I may do a side-by-side -side comparison video of Resident Evil Village on PSVR 2 and the current VR mod that I have on PC. So, um, so I think we can go ahead and get into a race, find a race to get into. And if you guys uh, want to talk anything, you know, uh, PSVR 2 related, you know, let it rip.
I do not exactly like these tracks for the daily races. Tantrum. Uh, thank you, Mario. But the princess is in another, another castle. Uh, world. <laughs> well, 2023, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Um, and I think by request... Uh, when I get my PSVR 2, I am going to do an unboxing. Uh, and I will stream probably immediately after the unboxing because uh, Craig the Tech Guy, how are you, my guy? Happy New Year. Um, I think that um, because PSVR 2 only requires a USB-C cable, there's no breakout box and stuff like that. Uh, I think all you're going to have to do is just plug the headset in and go through the calibrations and then have at it. So um, this is definitely going to be a plug-and-play uh, VR headset, in my opinion. Uh, this is not a track that I'm not sure I'm going to like this track, but we're going to give it a go. see what we can do and I'm going with the Porsche because I am a Porsche dude oh yeah I'm going to do something about that steering sensitivity and that as well The daily seems limited. Why aren't there um, tons of... I really can't answer that to tell you the truth, Tantrum, because I don't play the game that much, but I know that's something that people have been complaining about. You gotta be kidding me. You're gonna get... That's something they that is something they should remove on this game is giving people a penalty. Well, I guess this is qualifying. If it was practice, then yeah, it would be stupid. Um let's see your traction control, uh counter assist. That's on, um, that's on wall collision penalty. Yeah, I was going to say it was stupid for them to hit me with a penalty, but this is qualifying because, you know, what if, what if I was to ride the wall as a, as a means to get an advantage? So I guess that's fine that they put a, a, a penalty there. Track is so short it would have been better served with low horsepower cars or even carts. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can get where you're coming from with that.
trying to see how far I could push it because I think that's where people are going to try to overtake each other. Yeah, that curve does come up on you. So, uh, Tantrum, I'd like to thank you for uh, tuning in to a lot of my streams. So, I assume you must be a sim racing fan. So, with that being said, which one do you prefer, GT7 or ACC? So I got to fix the, the steering sensitivity. Never played ACC. For me, I actually like Project Cars 2 on PC. Yeah, actually, uh, Project Cars 2. That was the first racing game on... on um, set of courses is, is becoming my new favorite now uh, uh project cards 2 that was the racing game that made me say i made the right move getting a pc because drive club in vr was was a lot of fun but it was so blurry um but i get why it was so blurry now the game was taxing the hardware um, it just didn't it just didn't have the horsepower to um, display it clearly because there was some things on on the current PSVR that did come through clear but that was not one of them and when I got a PC and I tried project cars 2 in VR how clear that game was through a VR headset just blew my mind and I said this is one of the reasons why I got a PC because um, it, there were things on the current PSVR that were lacking. We did not have that many first person shooter games and it took us forever to get them. Uh, Kwaski, what's good? Happy New Year. There was a lot of things that PSVR was lacking. It, it lacked first person shooters. All we really had was, was Firewall. Um, that was really the only bona fide first person shooter that we had for quite a while until Alvo came along as far as I'm concerned. Uh, racing games, as I said before, Drive Club was extremely blurry. And GT Sport in VR, there was no multiplayer. At least Drive Club had a multiplayer, the Drive Club VR, but uh, GT Sport did not have a multiplayer. And by their own admission... Polyphony Digital said that they couldn't do the multiplayer because it would have been a mess. So, um, and one of the reasons Drive Club VR, it was multiplayer, but uh, Vaseline Club was still awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Uh, but uh, but the player base, they kept them separate. Um, they couldn't mix, for whatever reason, they did not mix the flat screen and the VR people together. They They kept those player bases separate. But in any case, short story long, um, PSVR lacked racing games. It lacked first-person shooter games. All around, it lacked a lot of multiplayer games. So I would probably say the very first game that made me say I got to get a PC was Onward. When I saw a video of Onward and see how people can like physically like change their um load their weapons where they were physically pulling clips out of the gun and popping the clips in and pull the slide back when i saw that i said i gotta get a pc and then i started doing the research and oh uh, the race must be about to start i did the research and i saw how many first person shooter games there was and i said i gotta get a pc and then when I tried Project Cars 2, 
that was kind of the icing on the cake. I said between the uh, between onward Pavlov and contractors and Project Cars too, that um, that gave me the validation that I was looking for as far as buying a PC. All right, let's see if we can crash out. That is a winning combo for PC VR, absolutely. Jeez, that's loud. Oh, they got... I'm dead last because I didn't qualify. For me, it was like Half-Life Alex, Stormland, OG Doom VR mod, and Serious Sam for me. Um, Half-Life Alex was that showpiece that demonstrated what, um what VR was capable of. Oh my lord. You eventually, oh, I forgot about Lone Echo too.
Have I tried Robo Recall? Oh yeah, that's a that was a game that came with the Oculus Rift CV1 when I bought that. Yeah, uh, Robo Recall was a free game. Like when you bought the um, the Oculus Rift CV1, it came with a bunch of free games. And uh, one of them was that VR Sports Challenge where I play, where you play basketball, football, hockey, and the baseball home run derby. Yeah, Lone Echo ended up, um, Lone Echo was just a free-to-play game for everybody. That race didn't did, that race didn't do anything for me. I also got to adjust the steering sensitivity because you guys were seeing me have to flip it all the way over. Rogue Squadron is amazing in VR. Rogue Squadron. I'm trying to think if I do I remember that game or not. Unless you're talking about Star Wars Squadron. Yeah, but all, all those free games that I mentioned, like um, uh, Robo Recall and uh, VR Sports Challenge, along with a few, Star Wars Rogues. Oh, you mean it was part of the um, the Star Wars Battlefront? Yeah, that was with uh, that was part of Star Wars Battlefront. You had to have a copy of Star Wars Battlefront in order to get to that Rogue Squadron. But yeah, it was a it, it was. It was absolutely amazing because it gave me my first taste of Star Wars. It gave me my first taste of sitting inside an X-Wing fighter and actually seeing, seeing one of those Star Destroyers in its actual size. It, it was mind-blowing. But at the same time, it, it actually made me a little bit motion sick. So it was one of those things where um, th that I thought it was that cool that I just I just dealt with the motion sickness. And then Star Wars Squadrons, that made the dream more of a reality because when I played Rogue Squadron, I remember thinking, wow, if only this game had multiplayer. And then we got it with Star Wars Squadrons. And wow, like 
Star Wars Squadron. No, it's a full VR game called Star Wars Rogue Squadrons. So, okay. What I think is, I think you might be combining the two names. Because with Star Wars Battlefront, there was a VR experience called Star Wars uh, Rogue One, I believe. And then you had the Star Wars Squadrons, but I don't think it had the word Rogue in there. You had Star Wars Squadrons. Um, and Star Wars Squadrons had a campaign and a multiplayer, whereas uh, the Rogue One, the Star Wars Rogue One experience that was part of Star Wars Battlefront, um, that was only like a, like a half hour experience the the event only lasted about a half an hour but that still gave us our taste of star our first taste of star wars of vr yep okay that's what i thought so yeah that's what i was thinking when i tried to roll oh yeah so on star wars battlefront the exact name of it is is called the star wars rogue mission and it's in vr and that's the single version of it it's about a half hour mission uh you're flying with your squadron and you naturally you engage against some tie fighters and then you engage against uh against a, against a star destroyer here let me options let me fix the controllers Fan attack podium. Oh, I wish I did have that wheel. Anyways, like I said, it's amazing. It, it is. And, um, but the reason why uh, I went out of my way to to try to separate the two is because the rogue mission came out first and and again I was absolutely blown away by it but I also got motion sick at the same time um but I do know that I remember thinking like wow if only this was in you know if only it had motion <sighs> if only it had multiplayer I'm sorry Okay. I see what's going on here. So, 5% input. So, that actually allows you to rest your foot on the brake. Gear shift neutral, E brake. Okay. Good enough. I'll adjust the, system the st steering sensitivity once we get into another race. Uh, I'm not a big fan of GT4 cars, but let's go ahead and do this. Is there rain expected?
not a fan of GT4 cars. Only one pops up. A man of his word. <laughs> you know, when it comes to car classes, uh, hold on a second. Let's see how this works. Yep, you definitely got a trail break through here. The car slides. Let's see what that does. Hello, what's good? Happy New Year. Oh, got heavy oscillation. causes the oscillation uh it could be you know uh, any combination of the force feedback settings within the wheelbase and and the game uh no plo um here let me pull into the grass uh, there was no announcement for GT7, and <clears throat> GT7 is the game that it it almost feels like the worst kept secret. That it's a everybody everybody who follows PSVR closely, we definitely feel like this is one of the games that's definitely going to get VR support, but Sony hasn't announced it yet. And there are those that are speculating that this week at CES that it could get a, a formally announced there. Um, but I think 
one of the reasons why Sony is handling this the way they are, why they're being so low key about about PSVR two, is because when PSVR two hits, Sony is going to dominate the VR market once again. Uh, right now, you know the the Oculus Quest, it, you know, pretty much runs the VR landscape. And a lot of that has to do... See, that's just a couple of days away. Sony will have VR announcements uh, there, I believe. Yeah, they will. And people think that this is where this game could get the VR support announcement. But going back to what I was saying, that right now the v, the Oculus Quest 2 is pretty much um, the market leader in VR right now. And when the Oculus Quest started to take off developers started shifting their efforts towards there because they had to go where the money was at once psvr hits and then you also have to keep in mind that the current psvr is severely limited compared to pc when psvr 2 hits with the power of the ps5 along with the features of the headset itself as i was saying before like the eye tracking um the eye gazing um, I think, you know, the FRS, you know, I think they're going to implement something similar to FRS or DLSS and all that stuff combined from what I'm understanding is supposed to save up to 60% worth of resources for PSVR 2. With all of that, games on PSVR 2 are going to look just as good as PC, if not better. That being said, developers will be able to come back to PSVR and then the controllers. The controllers are finally on par with other VR headsets now that they added thumbsticks. So all that being said, when developers develop a game for PSVR, they'll be able to port it to PC with no problem. Um, or if they develop a game for, PS, uh, for PC, they'll be able to port it to PSVR with no problem as well. Douglas Thompson, how's it going? How am I digging GT7? Oh, I bought this game day one. I, I didn't play it that much because the microtransactions in this game turned me off because I'm a racer. I'm not about trying to buy cars and show them off as if it, like this is Midnight Club. Uh, I want to race. I don't want to show off cars. I want to race. So the, the microtransactions plus the payout, the race payouts really turned me off. They structured an economy in this game that basically puts you in a position where you run out of patience and you don't want to earn the money for a car and you therefore pay for the microtransaction so you can hurry up and get said car. Um, they In the Legends dealership, they've got cars in there that cost t- close to $20 million and you only get like a, like a $5,000 payout for this race. So you're going to end up spending like $100 in real money to get that $20 million car. And I think that's... Um, I think it's somewhat predatory. But um but I've said it a million times. Yeah, that's yeah, that's grimy. Uh, I've said it a million times that this game in VR was the main reason why I bought a PS5. And when this game came out, I did play it day one. They need far more dailies and higher payouts. Um I think, Tantrum, I think they're going to leave the payouts the way they are because those who know how to circumvent the payout system, they're farming credits. And some people are getting uh, over a million dollars a day from farming. Those who don't want to farm but don't want to earn the credits, they're the ones that's going to break down and pay the microtransactions. So... Because I like to race GT3 cars, they don't cost a terrible amount of money. Um, I think they might cost anywhere from like 400000 to 500000 And as far as that goes, I pretty much have all the cars that I want. Uh, the only other car, there's only two other cars on here that I want. One is the Sauber Mercedes. And the other one is the Porsche 917, I believe it is. But that car is $20 million. 
No, uh, after this race, I'll come back and show it to you guys. Hello, you said it's crazy. This game is uh, seventy dollars, and they're treating it like it's a free-to-play game. Yeah, yeah. The microtransactions wouldn't seem so ridiculous if this was a free-to-play game. Oscillation is really bothering me. Kind of like race room. Uh, race room. I didn't play race room that much. I don't look at. I don't think it looks all that good in VR. And the cars that they give you for free are garbage. Um. see here uh and then the other thing that i'm gonna do is go back to setup three all the money they're getting from this game had better translate to vr development yeah So this is for this, for this, for this. I, I I never got iRacing. Far too expensive. Yeah, I did buy a one a one year membership for iRacing, but um, it is expensive. You gotta buy everything: the tracks, the cars, everything. And. And then not only that, the game looks like a dinosaur. I mean, the game looked like some old Xbox 360 shit. But to the game's credit, it runs great on even the weakest PCs. Yeah, it does. It runs great. I'll I'll admit that. Well, guess we won't be qualifying. <laughs> guess we'll be starting dead last again. Uh, excuse me while I turn on the AC. It is already hot. I was just going to mention iRacing. iRacing paved the way for milking the, hell, milking the hell out of virtual racers. See... This is where I kind of got to give GT7 a little bit of a pass because I gave iRacing a little bit of pass because $15 a month for iRacing as well as having to pay for every single track and every single car I think is absurd, but they got to pay for those licenses. 
And so in that aspect, I kind of gave Polyphony Digital a little bit of a pass with this game because they got to pay for those licenses as well. But the criti- one of the criticisms about this game was that it's got a lot of old cars on there because I think they put a lot of cars on here that Sony still has endorsements, had the licenses for. And uh, it seems like they didn't add a terrible amount of new cars on this game. But on the flip side of that, I think Sony is a much bigger entity than those who develop iRacing. So they were probably able to purchase those licenses at a discount. Uh, Mr. Thompson, do you still rally race? One time purchase is what I'm okay with, even if it's an extra cost. I can't stand subscriptions. Yeah, same here. I pay for a one year membership. It was on sale. It was like a Black Friday special. Once that thing ran out, I was done. Today's a day I don't care what place I finish in. I do, but I've been racing only on once or twice. Okay. Ah. This game makes you pay dearly for going into the grass. And that's why I said, of course, uh, is my favorite now. Yeah, the. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll get into that in a second because a set of Corsa with the VR, I've been racing with my dad online. I I sent him a, uh, I set him up with a rig. Oh, nice. I think I saw a, a video you posted before where I think you had your father try VR. I think I've seen that video. Uh, by the way, everybody, uh, subscribe to Douglas Thompson. Um, his video played a part in this Fanatec DD1 that you see sitting here. Uh, he actually had the CSL DD. He did a review on it. And I watched this video along with a lot of others. And and it played a part in me deciding to get a CSL DD. But once I got two letters from Fanatec saying that my order had been delayed, I canceled the CSL order and I ordered this DD-1. PlayStation needs to have more legit VR racing games for this. I think we're going to get them. After this race, definitely remind me of that again, in case I forget PLO, because I want to discuss which games that I think is going to come to PlayStation 5 and have VR support in the near, you know, in the next couple of years.
That's funny. I got the DD1 when I was on PS4 because I was waiting for them to send my CSL Elite. Ha 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 ha. Boy, that bus stop. <laughs> VR should be standard on all racing games. Can't wait to see what Coastmasters does with the WRC license. Yeah. Yeah, F-122, yep. Now, the circumstances surrounding that game, I don't think F-122 will get VR support this year, but I do think F-123 will get uh, VR support. And I say that because of the timing of it. Uh, F-122 released in July of last year. So... With PlayStation VR 2 coming out next month, I guess if, if EA and Codemasters wanted to be nice, they could go ahead and give it VR support, but I'm led to believe that they would just go ahead and wait. Is Project 2, Cars 2 still off Steam? I don't know. It's hard to go back to racing, flying a horror games flat after playing them in VR, absolutely. Yes, horror shooting racing games can't touch. Yeah, uh, horror games are a little too real. Andy B, what's up? They delisted project. If they delisted Project Cars 2, did they delist it from. I can't see the entire comment, so I don't know if you're saying that they delisted it from Steam or if they delisted it from the PlayStation Store. Because if they de. wherever they delete, uh, delisted it from, that could be a bad sign that they're going to shut down the servers. Because they already announced that they canceled Project Cars 4. I even, I even took a shot at them on Twitter. Project Cars 3 ended up being an arcade. That's all EA. Because EA is a huge entity trying to collect as much money as they can. And... They probably figured going arcade was the best way to a, to a crack to attract everybody. Just like uh, just like with this game, when this game first came out, the uh, the physics of this game when it first came out was more closer to a sim, and a lot of people was complaining about it. So they changed the physics to resemble more of an arcade game, and I think that they did that in order to protect the microtransactions. 
nobody you can't get people to pay for microtransactions if they don't play this game because they don't like the physics the hardcore racers like me we're not going to buy many microtransactions if any but the casuals yeah they're going to pay for those microtransactions because they want to show off their new cars so so they're going to pay for the microtransactions but they're not going to buy those they're not going to pay for these new cars that they want to show off to everybody if the car is too damn hard to drive now here's the problem i don't know if you oh shit i'm so busy yapping it and you brought project cars one and two prior to delisting yeah i have project cars two on um on pc So, what EA tried to do with Project Cars 3, in my opinion, it backfired. They made it arcadey. They they took out the need for uh, for pit stops and that kind of shit, and they destroyed that game. The hardcore racers left it, and you didn't attract the casuals like you were hoping. So they totally destroyed the game. So on Twitter, Codemasters had announced that Project Cars 4 was going to be the most realistic sim racer ever. And I responded to their tweet and told them, I said, that's an admission that you screwed up with Project Cars 3. The mainstream takeover in the gaming industry has become a huge double-edged sword. said I am Bell uh, left simply mad studios that pack is way ahead of me Anyone excited for Forza Motorsports 8? Me, hell no, VR support. Well, hold on, hold on, Tantrum. I will say that there's a possibility that Forza Motorsports 8 will get VR support on PC. Why do I say that? Because of Microsoft Flight Simulator. It, it has VR support on PC, but no VR support on console. That being said, if Forza Motorsports 8 gets VR support on PC, I will buy it. I mean, because I like racing in VR so much that I'll try just about anything. I, I, I'll try just about anything, you know, any racing game if it gets VR support. You know, hell, I'll even play some Mario type games in VR, which I've done before. Uh, I'm unable to see that whole comment tantrum, so I'll have to come back to it. I really wish that Microsoft would finally get into VR. Imagine what their huge wallet can get. Okay, look. 
a long time ago, I did a, I, I did a, well, this is when I got suspended by YouTube. Uh, I got hit with a copyright strike and I couldn't do live streams. So I had to upload a video telling you why I think Microsoft did not do VR. And I'll explain it again after this race. I mean, I could just go ahead and drop out of this race right now. Because I'm in last place. Look how far that pack is ahead of me. It's only three laps. There's no way I'm going to catch him. So let me drop out of this race and let's have this discussion. Or I'll just go ahead and pull over here and we can watch the cars go by. Okay, so look. You will be disqualified due to the... Uh, oh, well, I'll be... I'm hearing Simply Mad Studio members are leaving now to create their own company. Okay, let me go ahead and, and exit this. Okay, so let's start with um, the Simply Mad Studios thing. Well, not so much Simply Mad Studios. Um, bottom line is Project Cars 3 backfired. They try to appeal to the mainstream. It backfired. Uh, I said it before that on on Twitter, uh, Codemaster said that Project Cars 4 was going to be the most realistic sim racing game ever. And I responded and said, that's an admission that you guys screwed up on uh, on Project Cars 3. And so now, just uh, about a month ago, Codemasters announced that they canceled Project Cars 4. And so pretty much all Project Cars are going to be project cars are going to be shut down or something like that so that being said to come back to what doug thompson said about them having a wrc license that license don't mean shit because if the game's not making money for them ea will shut it down because that's the main that's the mainstream the mainstream greed of ea if the game's not making money they will shut the shit down um We know how EA operates. Um, so now coming back, talking about the the situation with um, Xbox and VR. Uh, here's why I think that didn't happen. So back in 2000, let me see. Uh, PlayStation VR launched in October of 2016. The next year, at EA 2017, Phil Spencer promised high-fidelity VR on Xbox One X. And it was supposed to happen later that year. It didn't happen because they were supposed to partner up with Oculus at the time. They were still called Oculus at the time. Uh, Microsoft was supposed to partner up with Oculus. So at the time that they announced that partnership, the Oculus Rift, uh, they haven't yet shut down the Project Car servers yet, uh, but it's coming, yeah. If they delisted the games across the board, yeah, I think it's only a matter of time. Um... So, I think in 2017, I think the Oculus Rift CV1 was still the headset that Oculus was using at the time. Now, I cannot remember when the Oculus Rift, uh, the Oculus Rift S and the Oculus Quest, I believe, launched in the same year. What I can't remember is whether it launched in 2018 or 2019. So you had the Oculus Rift 1, the, the, the Oculus Rift S, I'm sorry. And then I think a few months after that, the, the first Oculus Quest launched. I think those headsets ran for about two years, and then we had the Oculus Quest 2. So going all the way back to 2016, 
you have the Oculus Rift CV1, then the Oculus Rift S, then the Oculus Quest, and now the Oculus Quest 2. So what I'm trying to say is that if they would have followed through with VR on the Xbox like they promised, I think they might have had to start out on the Oculus Rift CV1 that had the external the external scanners and all that shit. Well, the next year, in 2018 or 2019, now people would have to switch over and use the Oculus Rift S. They would only get to use that for one or two years until Oculus discontinued the Rift S and the original Quest and went with the Quest 2. So what I'm trying to say is, from 2000. Um, from 2017 up until now, anybody that would have been playing VR on the Xbox through Oculus would have had to go through four headsets, the Oculus Rift CV1, the Oculus Rift S, the Oculus Quest, the Oculus Quest 2. You're talking four headsets, like over a four or a five year span. That would have pissed customers off. I got a CV1 they uh, on my Xbox. It's discontinued. Now I got to get a Rift S, a Rift S. Two years later, that's continued. I got it discontinued. I got to get a Quest 2. And I think what Microsoft wanted was a headset that was going to be supported throughout the entire generation. Because like with PSVR, they pretty much use the same headset throughout the generation. The only modifications they made was PSVR version 2. What they did was um, they got rid of the big giant plug that attached up here to the headset and they allowed for HDR pass-through because the original headset did not have HDR pass-through. You had to to disconnect the headset and then directly connect the console to the TV in order to get your your, uh, HDR. But when they came out with the HDR pass-through, it allowed you to play your flat screen games with HDR without having to disconnect the headset. Other than that, Sony kept the same headset throughout the entire generation. Whereas over on the Xbox side, if you would have went with their VR, you would have had to go through like four different headsets over like a five year span. And again, that would have pissed people off. And I think that's why X, uh, VR did not happen on the Xbox side because Microsoft is not going to manufacture their own shit because after Connect, after after the Connects failed, Microsoft stopped manufacturing their own shit. So if you wanted to get VR, you weren't going to Microsoft was not going to manufacture a, a headset. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised right now if Microsoft still has a partnership with um with Meta or Facebook, Oculus, whatever you want to call them, where is if they if they give them a call, all they got to do is, you know, whatever headset is being supported, they just bring it over there and set it up. Oh, and the right now the Oculus Quest Pro is out. So yeah, let's break down the Oculus history again. Uh, back when I got into VR, you had the Oculus Rift CV1, which I had that, the Oculus Rift S, which I had that, the original Oculus Quest, which I had that, the Oculus Quest 2, which I got those. Uh, and then um, now we've got the Oculus Quest Pro. So that's five headsets. And next year, we have the Oculus Quest 3 coming out. That's six headsets since 2016. They will piss people off if they have to keep upgrading these headsets because the one that they're using has been discontinued. So if the headset takes a dump, they got no way of getting it fixed. They got no way of getting it fixed or getting it replaced. I think in the case of Sony, they're going to manufacture PSVR headsets, in my opinion, until they finally run out of materials. Oh, my bass shaker started talking for some reason. Oh, well. Um, 
Microsoft have their mixed me- mixed reality headsets. Microsoft licensed out the mixed reality headsets. Um, I believe the HP Reverb 2 is a mixed reality headset. I think they did get a little bit of help from Valve with that headset, but for the most part, it's a mixed reality headset. So is the Samsung Odyssey. Microsoft should have uh, collabed with Lenovo and released VR for the Xbox X systems. Quest 3, yeah. Quest 3 is expected to be out next year. And we'll, we'll get to Quest 3 in a second. But um, Microsoft, other than that, um, I can't remember the name of that damn... Um, I can't remember what it's called, Halo Lens or some shit like that, some headset that the military uses. But other than that, Microsoft doesn't make a uh, a headset. They license, they designed a headset, and they de- and they licensed out the headset. And again, um, the Samsung Odyssey, uh, the Samsung Odyssey one and two. Uh, the HP Reverb G1 and G2. I think those are all original uh, Microsoft headset designs that were licensed out to them. So that shows you Microsoft knows how to make a headset. They just didn't want to do it. Will Blood and Truth get PSVR 2 update? That is an interesting question because... Once the PS5 came out, if you play your current PSVR games on the PS5, it's not backwards compatibility. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how to say it. Basically, when you play your PSVR games on the PS5, your PS5 reverts back to a PS4. And so you're essentially playing your games on a PS4 and if you're playing a game that requires the use of a dual shock controller, you have to use the dual shock four. You can't use the dual sense. It won't work. So what some developers did, the answer is no. Uh, a current PS Yeah. That is correct. Uh, PSVR games will not run on PSVR 2. What I think he was trying to ask is, will they make a PSVR version of Blood and Truth? So that being said, that still remains a good question. So what I'm trying to say is, they gave the game a patch after the PS5 came out. They gave the game an enhancement patch. Even though you were still playing a PS4 version of the game, they still gave it a patch. Um, so that remains a good question. What will happen when PSVR 2 comes out? Tantrum. Uh, you said, uh, talk about Project Car series. We still have Automobilista 2, which uses a, um, a modded Simply Mad engine. I think Project Automobilista 2 in terms of the VR optimization, is Project Cars 2 on steroids. Automobile Lister 2 is arguably... Jonathan Clifford, how's it going? Happy New Year, my guy. Um, Automobile Lister 2 is arguably, as far as VR goes, the best running and possibly best looking game in VR. Automobile List 2 is so well optimized, even a piece of shit computer can run it. I've never had a problem with that game, even when I had weaker computers. And um, when I bought the when I bought the 4090 on my PC right here, um, when I bought the 4090, I bought that mainly to be able to play a set of course of competition in VR because the game is not very well optimized in VR. So simply put. The better you want that game to look in VR, the more horsepower you need. And the 4090 is king of the mountain right now. Didn't the company recently buy Automobilista? Uh, 
I thought I read that. I don't know. That's something I would have to do some research on because I will say when it comes to iRacing, that kind of rocked the sim racing world when they found out that iRacing had to remove the Indy, uh, the Indy cars from the game because, yeah, I got a 4090 with a, a 12900K, uh, 30, 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM at 6,000 hertz. So my computer is an animal. And I still got, I got three computers, Douglas. Uh, this one has a 4090. That one in there has a 3080 Ti, and the one in the bedroom has a 3070 Ti. So, yeah, I got some, <laughs> I got some hardware here, along with the PS5 that I'm playing on. Um, so coming back to the iRacing situation, the Indy, the Indy Racing League or whatever. Any news on Half Life, Alex, for PSVR two? It is rumored. I think that is the worst case secret. Um, the developers of Half-Life Alex about a year ago hinted that they would like to work with Sony on VR collaborations. So to me, translation is that Half-Life Alex, in all likelihood, will come to PSVR 2. And you guys are going to be in for a real treat when you see that game on PSVR 2 because the game is arguably the best looking VR game out there. Uh, so, uh, so coming back to this iRacing thing, let me shorten it. In other words, iRacing cannot have indie cars in the game anymore because they are, they lost the license and that rocked the sim racing world. Everybody was talking about it because they felt like that was bad that I guess there's going to be a separate indie racing game coming out, I believe sometime next year. And that's why iRacing lost the indie, uh, the indie license. That being said, if another company came in and bought Automobile Lister 2 or bought the studio or whatever the case may be, it seemed like that would have made big news as far as sim racing goes. Because I somewhat keep up with what's going on with these sim racing games. So... If Automobile Listed 2 has been sold, let's just hope somebody like EA don't get their hands on them. So, yeah, hold on. Hold on, Douglas. Let me show you something. Yeah, those are the boxes for my 3070 Ti, 3080 Ti, and 4090. I definitely got to keep those boxes in case I decide to sell any of them. Oh, and one more thing. Hold on. Hold on.
Okay, so what I showed you there was the 2070 that was in my Alienware computer that I bought a few years ago. So when that computer took a dump, I grabbed everything that was salvageable from it and then tossed it in the garbage. I made a short video of it on YouTube. Um, I think it was like a short 30-second video. What i9 CPU was that? That was the i9-9900K. But my computer right here that's got the, um, the 4090 in it has a 12900K. So what happened was, this is what led me down this road. My Alienware originally came with that 2070 that I just showed you guys. Well, I upgraded the Alienware and I put a 3070 in it. And then I put an i7 9700K in it. And I ended up giving the 9700K to my son. And then I put a 9900K in it. Well, the problem was I definitely saw a performance boost, but now the computer started crashing on me and I was getting a blue screen and I couldn't figure out why I was getting a blue screen and somebody suggested to me that maybe you need to update the BIOS so I downloaded what I thought was a BIOS and it killed the computer the entire computer Goxbox how's it going um the income the entire computer just died so a couple of times I was able to get the computer back up and running, but what it was is when I put the 9700K back in there, it worked. When I took it out and put the 9900K in there, it was uh, it was crashing. It was taking a dump on me. So when I decided that I decided that I was done, I said I'm done with this Alienware. I said I'm going to buy a new computer, and so. I mean, my floor is an absolute mess. It's got wires everywhere. Um, so I decided to build a new computer, and that's the computer that's sitting in front of me now. And what I did was I built it, and I put an i9-12900K in there to future-proof it. But I was running it off a 3070. I gave the 3070 to my son, and then I bought a 3080 Ti off of eBay. When I learned that the 4090 was coming out, I said, I got to have that. So I got the 4090 and then um, the 3080, I had it laying around and then I put it in, a, I built the second PC. Long story short, because it would take forever to explain this shit. But I built the second PC, put the 3080 Ti in there. And when my son comes over on the weekend, he uses that computer, so it kind of interferes with me streaming because I use the two PC setup. So I built the third PC and put a 3070 Ti in that PC. So now when my son comes over, I race on this computer here. He does his thing on that computer in there, and then I use the third computer to stream. Ha, ah, you said I got to have that. I know that feeling. <laughs> um... So, 4090 is so power hungry, it sucks a lot. No, 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 no. The 4090 uses less, it draws less power than the 3090. This 4090 is way more powerful. This 4090 is way more powerful than the 3090. It uses less power and it runs a lot cooler. I mean, this 4090 never gets hot. Uh, I think, um, oh yeah, you said to remind you with, okay, I'll get to that in a second. This 4090, on average, a lot of games, especially flat screen games, they only run at like 50 degrees. Um, there's a couple of games that probably ran at about 70 degrees, but 70 degrees is the hottest that that 4090 has ever gotten. And here you have the AMD cars that I'm hearing getting a junction temperature of 110 degrees. These 4090s are like a damn icebox. They don't get hot. Now, the 30, th the 30 series cars, on the other hand, like my 3080 in there, that shit, that shit is like a damn furnace. Uh, whenever my son uses that computer, I got to turn on all kinds of fans and turn on the AC and all kinds of crazy shit. Same thing with my other computer in there that's got the 3070 in it. It puts out a lot of heat, too. 
Till now. Um, when you said to tell us what, what games that I think are coming to PSVR 2, as far as racing games go, damn, computer, shut up. <laughs> Those are my base shakers on this rig. I've got some base shakers on there, and um, every now and then it'll say Bluetooth mode or something. Anyway, so I think this game right here, GT7, is going to give VR support. I think Half-Life Alex is going to come to uh, PSVR. I think Medal of Honor is going to come to PSVR because they got to get their money back off that game. That game flopped on PC VR. I think one of the reasons why it flopped is because it was a very demanding game. They reckon at the time that Medal of Honor came out, I think the 2080 Ti was the most powerful. You know what? Let me shut this computer off so it'll shut up. Hold on. Okay, so at the time the Medal of Honor came out, the 2080 Ti, I believe, I believe was the most powerful GPU out there. And uh, we know for sure Horizon. Yeah, I've already ordered that bundle. I, I ordered the Horizon Call of the Mountain bundle. So Medal of Honor, they recommended that you use a 2080 Ti for that game, and they recommended that you put this game on a SSD. The, the file size of the game was humongous the file size of that game was 170 gigs part of it was the game had a documentary where they talked to um, war veterans about serving in the second world war um, that game flopped it wasn't a bad game but it flopped and I think one of the reasons why it flopped is because it just wasn't a lot of PC VR headsets out there they were able to shrink the game down to fit on the Oculus Quest 2. The problem was you had to basically do a complete you you basically had to wipe your um you had to wipe your storage clean because the Oculus Quest 2 only had enough storage for that one game. So because of that, I think it didn't do that well on the Oculus Quest 2. So I know that they're going to be looking to recoup some of their money because it probably did cost a lot of money to make that game. And I have no doubt they're going to try to at least try to get their money back off of that game. So that is another game that I believe will eventually come to PSVR 2. Not only that, the game has multiplayer. And the, the multiplayer is actually, I think the multiplayer was actually well done on that game. But because nobody plays it, it's dead. Uh, so I think coming to PlayStation VR will give the multiplayer a second chance at life. So that's another game. Medal of Honor, I do believe, will come to PSVR 2. I believe that the Lone Echo games will eventually come to uh, PSVR 2, especially with uh, Meta, like, bleeding money right now. They are seriously hurting as far as, uh, um, as far, I guess, as far as their stocks going down and shit like that, and people wanting Mark Zuckerberg to step down because they're not behind this metaverse that he wants to create. Um... And I think they've talked about it in the past about working with Sony too, which in a sense they have because PlayStation VR got the Star Wars Tales from Galaxy's Edge games. And I think in return, we got Tetris Effect over on um, on the Oculus Quest 2. So, so I think both Lone Echo 1 and 2 will come to PSVR 2. Not only that, I think... Um, Lone Echo 2, I think, flopped on PC. And I think one of the reasons why it flopped was because of the delays. I think the game had been delayed like three or four times. And when it came out, there was uh, flashes of the game where the graphics didn't look that good. And it was it was kind of buggy. So uh, what else do I think is going to come to PlayStation VR? Uh, Grand Theft Auto 5. A lot of us in the VR community, we believe the Grand Theft Auto 5 will come to PSVR 2. See, Slim was good. Currently, you can play Grand Theft Auto 5 in VR using VR mods. 
You can only play the campaign, though. If you attempt to play the multiplayer in VR, the anti-cheat will pick it up, and it will think that you are trying to cheat, and it will ban you. So if Grand Theft Auto V comes to PSVR 2, you, in my opinion, you would not only be able to play the campaign, but you would also be able to officially play the multiplayer in VR without fear of being banned because it will be official. So, uh, and, and there is interest in that game in VR, and I'll tell you why. So, what happened was, guy by the name, a VR modder by the name of Luke Ross, he did a VR mod for Grand Theft Auto. And it did pretty well. So well that I found it to be a coincidence that Steam had the game on sale for 15 bucks. Okay, coincidence? I don't know. Maybe. But here's what made me say that they're interested in it. Six months later, Luke Ross comes out with an update for his Grand Theft Auto VR mod where he was like, I guess, like getting rid of the, the, uh, the borders on the edge. I guess he did an update to get rid of that. And then once again, the game popped up on sale on Steam for like 15 bucks right around the time that that update came out. Coincidence? Two VR updates, two times the game went on sale. They knew what he was doing. And Sony has a great relationship with... Um, with Rockstar, v GTA 5 would be huge. Yes. Do you think PSVR 2 will ultimately be hacked to work with PC? There's no doubt in my mind. And, and I started this stream off by telling people that I think that when PSVR 2 comes out, the PC master race will find a way to make it work on PC. And when they do, assuming that the eye tracking and all that stuff works on PC, it will probably be my go-to headset. Right now, this HP Reverb G2 is my head, uh, my go-to headset, at least for sim racing. Uh, I, I've got Quest 2s and shit like that, and I, I've got about like five headsets laying around here. Um, so here's another reason. Another game that I think could possibly come to PSVR 2 could be Red Dead Redemption 2. I say that once again because uh, Sony has a great relationship with Rockstar. And Rockstar had teased before that there was going to be some experiences coming exclusively to the PlayStation platform. They could have been referring to VR. And Luke Ross that I mentioned, who did the Grand Theft Auto mod, he did a mod, he did a VR mod for Red Dead Redemption. And Rockstar subsequently sent him a cease and desist order to shut down that VR mod for Red Dead Redemption 2. You use this man in order to sell copies of Grand Theft Auto so people could pick it up for the VR mod. And then you turn around and tell him to stop it for Red Dead Redemption. Why would you do that? Unless Sony stepped in and said, we want to put Red Dead Redemption 2 on PSVR 2. That means you got to get Luke Ross out of the way so people can't play that mod and then... The only place you'll be able to get it is on PSVR 2. So Red Dead Redemption 2 is another game that I think could come to PSVR 2. Um, the Call of Duties are another game that I think could possibly come to PlayStation VR 2. That is another reason why I think Sony is fighting so hard to stop Microsoft from owning Activision. Because... The 70% of money that uh, Sony would get off of the Call of Duty games, it's more than that. A Call of Duty game in VR is a system seller. I don't care who you are. If you do not, I don't care if you hate VR. If VR comes to um, Call of Duty, it's a system seller. Everybody plays buys a PlayStation VR headset. They have dabbled in VR before. I think on the Call of Duty um, Advanced Warfare, they had what was called the Jackal Experience that was exclusive to PSVR. 
uh, where you're flying one of the jackal planes or something like that in VR. Uh, I have not experienced it because I have not bought the game. You, it, it is not a standalone experience. You have to own a copy of Advanced Warfare in order to access this experience. So I think Sony might have already been negotiating with Activision. And plus it was a rumor this past summer that we could have possibly gotten an announcement of VR support on PSVR 2. So I think Sony might have been in the middle of negotiating. Bring in Call of Duty to PSVR 2. PSVR spinoff for The Last of Us would be a great horror experience. Absolutely. And Resident Evil Village in VR was a no-brainer. They had to do that. The Resident Evil games on PC are getting VR mods all over the place. Hell, Oculus. They redid Resident Evil 4 in VR. It still has the same 360 graphics, but it's in VR. I, I streamed it once, so if you go through my library, I got damn near 2,000 videos and shit like that, so you would have to comb through a lot of videos or just type it in the search bar, but um, there are VR mods out there for Resident Evil Biohazard, because a lot of people on PC were upset that Resident Evil 7 only got VR support on PSVR because it, it's an exclusive, so only paid for it. But Prey Dog did a VR mod for it, so you can play Resident Evil 7 Biohazard in VR, and you can play Resident Evil Village in VR too, is thanks to uh, Prey Dog, because he did VR mods for both of those games. So it was a no-brainer that Sony was going to have to put VR support on Resident Evil Village. I waited to pick up Resident Evil 8 because I felt the VR update coming in my bones. Yeah, the game, I believe the game is on sale for 20 bucks right now. So pick it up now if you haven't done it. Because as we draw closer to the release of PSVR 2, the price of that game is going to go back up to 50, 60, even $70. So now is the time to grab that game. I think the sale might last until January 5th. So if you do not have a copy of Resident Evil Village and you plan on picking up PSVR 2, it is a must that you grab this game now before it goes back up. Uh, I originally thought that contractors and onward would eventually come to um, PSVR but I do not think Onward will come to PSVR because Facebook bought the studio that developed that, that, developed that game. They bought Coat Sync. Um, they also bought the developers of Beat Saber. I definitely picked it up during this new sale. Absolutely. Good move. Uh, Facebook also purchased the developers of... Um, Of Asgard's Wrath, Sanzaru, they picked them up. And I think that might be part of the reason why Sony bought Insomniac. Because Insomniac has made VR games before. They made an Oculus exclusive called Stormland. And at the time that that game came out, it was one of the best looking games out on PSVR. I think if Sony did not buy Insomniac, they would have been spread so thin that the next Spider-Man game would have shown it because they probably would have been short on manpower developing that game. So not only do I think Sony purchased Insomniac for the great work that they did on Spider-Man, I think they plan on having Insom Insomniac make some VR games for them. And that's why I posted that poll on Twitter asking people who is Sony's best asset. Is it Naughty Dog? Is it Sony Santa Monica who developed God of War or is it Insomniac? Right now, I believe Insomniac is Sony's most valuable asset. Look how many games they put out. 
they in, in these past three four years they put out spider-man they put out dlc for spider-man they uh did a spider-man remaster they um put out miles morales they put out ratchet and clank they got spider-man 2 coming they got wolverine coming and being that they got vr experience they're going to make vr games for sony insomniac is sony's most valuable asset who's the most talented you could argue that you could say that maybe naughty dogs their most talented but insomniac is their most valuable no question uh even though stormland's an old game i think that's a game that could come to psvr um now there's a shooting game on on a pc called pavlov it's a vr first person shooter game i thought it was a given that that game was going to come come to psvr but it's not because the developer said that some of the lighting effects that he was adding to the game was bleeding edge and i think what he was implying is that the ps5 is not going to be strong enough to handle what he plans to do to the game in the future so what's coming to playstation vr is pavlov shack that is the oculus quest version of pavlov i thought contractors would come to psvr but i don't think that's going to happen because it's got mod support if it comes to psvr i don't think it'll have mod support because sony and microsoft do not play around with that shit with mod support on on consoles you're going to get what they give you and you're going to pay for it whereas mods on pcs are usually free uh you all read it pre-ordered the headset absolutely i purchased the um horizon bundle with the horizon call of the mountain as well as a charger so actually sony sent me an invite for a pre-order like maybe two weeks before pre-orders went live and with this invite it's basically saying we're reserving a headset for you and when pre-orders go live you've got three days to order to pre-order the headset otherwise it goes to the next person so yes i will have my psvr2 day one and it's been requested that i do an unboxing so i will unbox it live and then um then i'll connect it and we'll do some live streams i've already purchased resident evil village as far as games that have been confirmed i'm going to get the new firewall game and i'm also going to get sierra squad those are two first person shooter games that's going to be coming to playstation vr and um the reason why insomniac is so good because of um let me see here because they pushed the limits of ps5 we know they pushed the ssd and we know they found a way to have ray tracing at 40 frames per second using uh 120 frames per second uh any chance resident evil's ps5 gets psvr support <sighs> that's a really tough question to answer because it's already on the current psvr I think that is something that Sony and Capcom would have to work out. Because I'm pretty sure Capcom is being paid by Sony to add VR support to Resident Evil Village. But I think they would have done it anyway. Because for a while, Resident Evil, Resident Evil 7 was the most downloaded VR game for a while. I think until Beat Saber took the crown from them. As far as PSVR community goes, Resident Evil 7 is a um, is a fan favorite. So that is definitely a good question. 
But the problem is, if you give Resident Evil 7 VR support, would it get in the way of Resident Evil Village along with the remix, the re, um, the remake of Resident Evil 4, which is also supposed to get some sort of VR support on PSVR 2. So, if they gave Resident Evil 7 some sort of VR support on PS5, I think it's something that would happen down the line. Because I think you don't want those games overlapping each other. So, will we get Astrobot Rescue Mission? Two for, I think so. I think we will. I don't know if it'll be Rescue Mission 2, but I do think we'll get some sort of... I think we will get some sort of Astro Astrobot. Because that's another fan favorite. Ask you the current Astrobot Rescue Mission. is another fan favorite on the current PSVR. I like it. I didn't finish it. I got about three quarters of the way through it. Damn, what time is it? It's already two o'clock. And my phone is about to go dead here in a second, so... I'll have to plug it up. I would love a new Astrobot game, both VR and flag game. But yeah, I, I do think we will get some sort of Astrobot game, no question. Uh oh, what I I I think I was also talking about the F122. When PlayStation VR 2 comes out next month, they could easily give F-122 VR support. But I think that might deter some people from buying F-123. Um, let's say they give F-122 VR support next month. And it turns out to be dog shit. Then people might not... Because at this stage of the game... I'm led to believe that all the Formula One games by EA and Codemasters comes out every July. So by the time PSVR 2 hits next month, late next month, it'll be March before it's in full swing. And we would only be a few months away from F-123. So I don't know if that makes a lot of sense to put VR support on a game that's only going to have a few more months of life before the next season comes out. So I think that EA and Codemasters are going to wait until F-123 comes out this July and give that VR support. Not only that, if they finally launch G if they finally announce GT7 having VR support and it turns out to be a launch game, then F-122 and GT7, they could bump heads. So it it would probably be a better move for EA and Codemasters to wait until F-123 to come out to give it VR support. By then, you know, not only that, it gives them more time to optimize uh, F-123 if they wait until then to give the game VR support. So... But I think any chance DualSense will use any PSVR 2 games like... Here, let me read this whole game. Um, any chance DualSense will use... Uh, DualSense since will use for any uh, PSVR 2 game like DualShock for PSVR. Absolutely. Either way you go, no matter which controller method you use, you're going to get the haptic feedback. If they develop a VR game where you're going to be required to use this dual sense, you get the haptic feedback. If you end up using 
the PSVR 2 controllers, they also have haptic feedback as well. So no matter what the controller method is, you will get the haptic feedback. And not only that, the headset has haptic feedback in the headset. Now, from what I'm understanding, I think people seem to believe that that will help reduce motion sickness. But I will say one thing that's going to be absolutely cool is when you play a first person shooter game and you get shot in the head and you feel that headset vibrate because you got shot in the head. That is going to be cool. I've also seen patents for full body tracking. So I suspect like right now, the camera that I'm pointing at right now, that is the PlayStation 5 camera. I also suspect they're going to use that camera for full body tracking. So when you play games uh, where you can lift your leg up, you're going to see it. Because right now, on PC VR, there's a couple of methods how you can get full body tracking. One is Vive Trackers by HTC. You buy these trackers that look like tethers. You, anybody seen a guy get go to jail, and when they get out on jail, they put you on that tethered monitor. Um, basically, it, it looks like a block on your ankle. HTC makes a... Uh, uh, body trackers like that for your ankle. So you, you strap one to each ankle and you wrap one around your waist and that's how you get full body support. That's one method of getting body, full body support. Another way on PC VR to get full body support is the original Kinect that they made for the Xbox 360. You can plug that into a PC and for games that support it, you can use that Kinect for full body support. My son was using it for VR chat. Um, he used to bring his Kinect over because I, I found one on eBay for him because those things have been long discontinued, but I found one for him on eBay and um, occasionally he'll use it for full body support, for full body tracking. And so I've seen patented drawings where uh, it suggests that this camera could be used for full body tracking. I also saw a drawing, a patented drawing from Sony that suggests that you may be able to connect two PSVR headsets to the PS5. If they do something like that, they will have pulled off a VR miracle because it already takes a ton of resources to run one headset. If they pull off something where you can run two off of the same console, that would be absolutely incredible. So, at the moment, that's, that's really all I can think of. As far as games coming to PlayStation VR, that's, that's really all I can think of. I mean, there's going to be, there's going to be a ton of games, uh, Coming to PSVR 2. I mean, there is a game this already out on PSVR right now that is coming. To PSVR 2, but I, I don't want to mention it because I don't want to give away that developers, I, I don't want to give them away because um, I had made friends with this person uh, last summer. But I think when the game comes to PSVR 2, um, what this person has planned, I think the game is going to be big. So... So, I mean, when that game finally hits PSVR 2, you know, I will I will talk about it. 
the games that you listed all make sense to, to be coming to PSVR too. Yeah, absolutely. Because when PSVR two gets hits its full stride, there's going to be two revenue streams for developers. Right now, I kind of hate to say it, but kind of right now, what we're getting is bullshit. Since the Oculus Quest two is where the money is at right now. Developers are developing these little rinky-dink games for the Oculus Quest 2, and then when they pour them over to PC, they really it, it really doesn't look any different than the Oculus Quest. So we're still getting these little rinky-dink Minecraft-looking games over on PC, even though you know my PC's got a 4090. Because that's extra work on the developer's part to develop the game for the Oculus Quest and then give it this huge coat of paint for PC. So that's one of the reasons why I'm excited for PSVR 2 because, like I said before, the PS5 has the power of a mid-range computer and with all the additional features that you get, these games are going to look amazing on PSVR 2. And if they port the game over to PC, we're going to get a good-looking game. We're not going to get an Oculus Quest looking game on PC. At the very least, we're going to get the same looking game that was on PSVR 2. So developers are going to have another revenue stream. They can make a game for PC and they can port it over to PSVR 2 with minimal tweaks, if any, or vice versa. The foveated rendering would be a game changer. The, the foveated rendering is the biggest reason why a lot of these games on PSVR 2 is going to be able to keep up with PC. Because currently right now, like using this um, this HP Reverb, for example, the sweet spot in the center of the lenses is extra crisp. It is extra, extra sharp. But everything around the outer edges is blurry. PSVR 2 is going to have eye tracking foveated rendering the foveated rendering what it does is like the foveated rendering in this headset like i said the sweet spot in the middle is where most of the resources are concentrated and then everything else as you gradually go further out gets blurrier and blurrier in order to save resources so with the eye tracking on psvr2 and I believe PSVR 2 is going to have pancake lenses, whereas most VR headsets right now have Fresno lenses. Pancake lenses are going to be extra thin, they're going to be lighter, and they won't have these funny-looking spiraled rings that you see inside of these Fresno lenses. And then the eye tracking of the PSVR 2 will follow your pupil no matter where you look. So when you look at the outer edges of the lenses, even that part on the outside will be clear. So what it what it will do with the um, eye tracking is everywhere your eye moves, it will focus all the resources to wherever your eye moves and everything else that you don't see will be blurry. It only renders what you're looking at. So, so currently with this headset, let's say I'm looking, uh, my head is pointed straight ahead, right? If I want to see something on the left clearly, I have to turn my head to the left and look at it. Otherwise, if I keep my head straight, but I look to the left with my eyes, everything will be blurry because I'm looking at the edges of the lenses. With PSVR 2, you can keep your head straight and move your eyes all over the place, and no matter where you look, it will be clear. So that's another reason why from what i'm understanding they call it eye tracking eye gazing foveated rendering all that stuff combined and i think they might implement something similar to dlss all that stuff combined i'm hearing is supposed to save the ps5 up to 60 percent of resources so vr games on psvr2 are going to be on par with pc how close they come together I don't know, but it's going to be close. 
And so because of that, in my opinion, when PSVR 2 hits, I don't think you'll need to get a PC if you don't want one. If you don't want to spend the, the type of money that I have, like my computer that's got this 4090 in it, I've got over $4,000 in that computer. Just the 4090 alone was 1600 bucks. And then the 12900K that's in there is, at the time that I bought it was, I believe, $640. Talking $2,200 just for a CPU and a GPU. And then at the time, I put 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM in there. That was about 340 bucks for that. I put two M.2 drives in it. I put a Samsung 980 Pro, one terabyte. That was $180. And I also put a 70, uh, a Samsung 970 Evo in there. Which was 160 bucks. Also put two Western Digital SSDs in there, which I think were about 50 bucks a piece. And um, I've also got a five terabyte external hard drive attached to it. Uh, what else do I have? Um, cooler uh, a water uh msi liquid cooler that was about 160 bucks uh I'm trying to think what else ended up costing a pretty penny the power supply i got a 1000 watt power supply in there uh corsair 1000 watt power supply that was about 190 dollars um I've got DDR5 RAM in it now, and I had to, and I put a new motherboard in there because I had to put a DDR5 motherboard in there when I previously had a DDR4. Uh, my computer, uh, if you include the fans that are in the GPU as well as the water cooler, I think my computer has about 14 fans. You know, but that's including the fan that's in the power supply, the fan that's inside the, the the fan that runs the pump for the water cooler, the three fans that attach to the to the uh, water cooler. What's your view on why Sony did not go wireless option? Because it would tax the shit out of the um, PS5. How do I know that? Because right now. Uh, just a second. Let me let me go grab something. Okay, so to answer your question about why Sony didn't go wireless, this right here <clears throat> is my Oculus Quest 2. You all know that this is a standalone headset, but you can also use this headset as a PC headset, and you can do it one of two ways. One is you can use a USB-C, what they call a link cable, and connect it to your PC, and that will turn it into a PC headset so you can play uh, PC VR games. The other way to connect it is wirelessly through an app called Virtual Desktop. And what this does, Virtual Desktop, it allows you to play your PC games wirelessly through this Oculus Quest. The problem is it is very taxing on the hardware. Um, when I had Virtual Desktop on my other computer, the bad news was 
is that it took up like 50% of the resources. It took up half my computer. The good part was it ran a lot of games ran smooth. The latency, the wireless latency was about the same as if the headset had a cord attached to it. So virtual desktop was amazing. My computer's here, but I could play my games in any part of this apartment. I could play games standing here, back there in that room, in my, um, in my bedroom. I think there would be two problems making PSVR 2 wireless. One is I think it would tax the shit out of the console. And I think that games would run like dog shit because if she wants me to, if she wants me to, I will. Was that? He said, uh, Chad's like taking the truck and was wondering if you could take me home. Yeah, what time do you want to go home? Uh, five. Okay. All right, sorry about that, folks. So, I think the reason why they won't go wireless is because it would tax the shit out of the PS5 and games would subsequently run like dog shit because it would take up too much resources of the console. I think the other reason why they won't go wireless is because they would have to put a battery inside this headset and it would probably only have enough battery life to run maybe two hours. Because with this Oculus Quest, if you play this Oculus Quest in standalone mode, it only has about two hours of battery life. So for some people to counteract that, you can buy some headsets that have a battery pack attached and what will happen is um it would draw from this battery first and then when this battery runs out it'll start drawing from the battery that's mounted on the back of the headset so um those are the two reasons why i don't think you would see wireless at least at least not to start off with if sony does wireless vr i think it won't happen for a couple of years until sony knows they can find a way to make it run good and to have good battery life. I think Sony would want to have a headset that's got battery life of at least three hours. Because I think what you don't want is a headset that only has about two hours of battery life, but it takes four hours to charge it up. So the technology is there. It can be done, but I don't... Um, I don't think it makes a lot of sense right now. P PS5 backtrack backpack like a stormtrooper. <laughs> yeah, they could do that. Um, So, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, oh, you know what? And so while we're on this game, let's, I mean, you guys have seen me do this before. But I'm going to show you when this game gets VR support, I'm going to show you the game, the car. I'm already driving it right now in VR, but I'll show you the car. So let's um, let's change cars. Is it possible a laptop and a backpack can give you PC VR experience? Yes, it's possible right now. In fact. I think Oculus for the Rift S I think a couple of years ago they gave you an adapter because for whatever reason 
you could not plug an Oculus Rift S directly into a laptop. So I think they gave you an adapter, an adapter that would allow you to plug it into a laptop. So yes, it, it is there. It's been there for a few years. You can play VR with your headset plugged into a laptop. And these laptops are getting more and more powerful these days because I think now you can buy a laptop that's got a 3080 in it. And um, and, uh, and uh, 3080 is a pretty powerful GPU to play VR games, but here's one of the here's one of the cars. I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to driving this car in VR when PSVR 2 hits. I can drive this car right now, uh, but there's only two ways I can drive this car. One is on Project Cars 2. This car is on Project Cars 2. I can drive it that way in VR. Or the mods on a set of Corsa. Build an arm bam with a small LCD screen and keyboard like Power Glove or Pit Boy, like it uh, Fallout as the interface uh, to the to the laptop. The uh, this Oculus Quest, they've done so many updates to this thing that now you can do office work with this headset now, I believe. With the headset on, you can open up like three windows, virtual windows in front of you, and then this headset has hand tracking so you can navigate without needing a controller. So, and I think you can pull up like a virtual keyboard so you can tap it without having to use a controller. You can type with that virtual keyboard and you can have like multiple windows open and navigate through these windows by, you know, making finger gestures and stuff like that because your hand is the controller now. So all this stuff you guys are talking about is already out on PC VR. And it's been out for a while, but PC VR is niche. A lot of people do not know about it. You guys, when PS VR 2 comes out, true, I was thinking most laptop stuff uh, shut off when you close the screen. When, when PS VR 2 comes out, and you're gonna, you guys are going to say, wow, PSVR, PSVR can do this. PSVR can do that. And we're going to sit here and say, this shit's been already been out for years on PC. I was thinking most laptops were shut off uh, when you close. Uh, oh, I, I, okay, I get what you're saying. Um, I don't know. Because I've never done any kind of VR on a laptop. But that is an interesting question. I get what you're saying now. You know, could you put that laptop in a backpack with it closed, with a VR headset connected to it, wired or wirelessly, and uh, play VR games? I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's out there, though. So... God, I'm surprised you guys can sit here and listen to me ramble about this because uh, imagine like the Motorola Sidekick as a screen and interface for the laptop. I'm the wrong person to talk to when it comes to phones because I'm a person that will buy a basic phone. I mean, um, now don't get me wrong. I don't pull into a gas station and just grab any phone off the shelf. Uh, like I've, I've been with Boost Mobile like 10 years you know, and they do a fairly good job of keeping up with the latest phones. So uh, whenever I, I've been going through them, whenever I want a new phone, but um, I don't believe in paying twelve hundred dollars and shit like that for an iPhone. But I definitely can't. I definitely can't critique anyone who wishes to spend that kind of money on a phone, given how much money that I've spent. Microsoft Flight Simulator. For VR, uh, PSVR 2, that could be a problem. That is a super demanding game, even flat screen. Before the 4090 came out, you play Microsoft Flight Simulator flat screen. On a 3090 in 4K, 
I think you would only get about maybe 30 frames, 25 frames per second. So now, with the 4090, with raw rasterization, with no DLSS, just raw rasterization, on a 4090 that I believe has a 12900K, uh, in 4K, I think you can run Microsoft Flight Simulator at about 47 frames per second. If you add um, DLSS, the standard DLSS or DLSS2, as we're calling it, I think you can get about 65 frames per second. And now with DLSS3, frame generation as they call it because it inserts fake frames you got frame one and frame two and with dlss3 it puts a frame right in front of right in between frame one and frame two so what it does is with dlss3 frame generation it creates fake frames so what it does is it takes frame number one And it anticipates what frame number two is going to look like. And it creates a frame and puts it in between frame one and two. Essentially giving you three frames. So because of that, Microsoft Flight Simulator with DLSS3, uh, in 4K, I think you can get around... Um, I think you can get like maybe around 80 frames, maybe 90. You guys would have to go check out benchmark videos to be certain, but I think you might be able to get somewhere between 80 and 90 frames with DLSS3. Spider-Man game on PC with DLSS3. Uh, with raw, raw rasterized, I think Spider-Man gets about 75 frames per second with raw rasterization. But with DLSS3, I think Spider-Man gets about 100 frames per second. So that brings us back to my, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator on PlayStation 2. The only way, in my opinion, they could put that game on PSVR 2, they would have to implement some sort of FSR or DLSS technology in order to get good frame rate. Because one thing Sony does not fuck around about is poor performance on PSVR. Almost every game on PlayStation VR runs flawlessly because Sony demands that those games, I think, runs at 90 frames per second because they believe drop frames is what causes motion sickness. So, in my opinion... It would come down to two things for Microsoft Flight Simulator to be on PSVR 2. One is it would come down to Sony and Microsoft agreeing on the game coming to PSVR 2. The other is, is that Sony probably won't let the game onto their platform unless it can run at 90 frames per second. So, short story long. If you were to put a gun in my head and ask me if Microsoft Flight Simulator is coming to PlayStation VR 2, the answer right now would be no, until they find a way to better optimize it. It is a very demanding game. All these 4090 benchmarks that you see all over the place, two of the most demanding games that they use for these benchmarks is Cyberpunk and Microsoft Flight Simulator. Those two games are highly demanding. When I, when I had the 3080 Ti in this computer, I did two benchmarks on Cyberpunk because I have that game. Raw rasterization with no DLSS, I was getting about maybe 40-something frames per second. And then with DLSS 2 on auto, now, keep in mind, this is ultra settings, though. This is ultra setting with ray tracing on. With DLSS 2 for Cyberpunk, I was getting, I want to say about 
62 frames per second some shit like that that's with the 3080 but now with this 4090 raw rasterization I get about 60 frames per second with raw rasterization I get about 90 frames per second with DLSS 2 and I think with uh, frame generation DLSS 3 I think I benchmarked that once and I was getting about uh, about 100 frames per second with DLSS 3 and I think that's the only game that I've tried the frame generation on I bought the 4094's raw power I'm not interested in using DLSS although I did have to make an exception for a sort of a set of course competizione uh, in VR I did turn on DLSS I put it on quality but I turned the sharpening filter up to a hundred percent and a picture is razor sharp and it runs wow. so holy smokes how long have I been blabbing at least a couple of hours yeah, it started streaming two hours ago. Uh, but I'll be ready to wrap this up here pretty soon. Voice is getting scratchy. I'm getting hungry. But uh, I can't thank you guys enough for tuning in. This has really been fun. Um, I knew I was going to do something on um, New Year's because let's, let's face it. Uh, a lot of us run in the new year at midnight you wake up this morning for those of you that drink you know once you finally recover from that i mean if you watch some football if there was some football on yeah but what's that what's what's after that uh just put insomniac on flight simulator uh yeah they yeah they would definitely optimize it Here is the other car that I can't wait to drive in VR. Although, I've already driven this car. This is the Mazda 787B. This car has a unique sound to it. It's got a high-pitched scream to it. This car was the first Japanese car to win the 24 hours of Le Mans in 1991 said I'm working for the new year oh shit so this car was so loud in the 24 hours of Le Mans that the announcers had to warn people that the car was coming so they could cover their ears this car was capable of producing 900 horsepower but for reliability issues to make sure that the car didn't break down, they tuned it down to 700 horsepower. And as I stated, it was the first car to, it was the first Japanese car to win the 24 hours of Le Mans. And then it was outlawed the next year. I spent years trying to find out why the car was outlawed the next year the way news articles that the way the headlines made it sound they made it sound like mazda cheated or something what it was is there was a rule effect there was a rule change that was about to take effect the next year and one of the rule changes was because they wanted to try to get people to move closer towards hybrid engines and electric engines so in part of forcing people in that direction they outlawed the rotary engine and this car had a rotary engine in it so so the so the next year the rotary engine was banned from competition so so it just so happens that Mazda won the 24 hours of Le Mans on the very last year that the rotary engine was legal the guy who was behind the wheel of this car when they won his name was Johnny Abair he did a double stint he did a stint 
He requested to stay in the car. So he did a double stint. Mercedes were favored to win this race. Johnny Abair noticed that the Sauber Mercedes was starting to slow down. The, the wear and tear that the race was putting on these cars was starting to take a toll on the Mercedes. So they started slowing down because the car was having problems and they were trying not to push the car so they could try to nurse it. And once Johnny Aber suspected that they were slowing down, they told him to push it. To start trying to push them harder and make them go faster to try to make their car break down. Um, and they ended up coming into the pits and Mazda went past them, took the lead, and won the race. At the end of the race, Johnny Aber was so exhausted that he was damn near unconscious. They had to pull him out of the car and like immediately take him to the hospital. Uh, because of that, I had been fascinated with this car. And to drive this car in VR, what are your thoughts on MetaQuest 3? Would it better be better than PSVR 2? Um, uh, I'll get to that in a second. So I've driven this car under a couple of circumstances in VR. I've driven this car in VR on GT Sport. The problem is that GT Sport does not have a multiplayer in VR. You can only do time trials or you can do one-on-one -on -one against the AI, which the AI has about as much intelligence and competitiveness as a kindergartner. The other way I was able to drive this car is on a set of Corsa through the mods. So it's going to be fun to drive this car in VR on this game, you know, actually online competing against, you know, the GT community. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. So to answer your question about Quest 3 being better than he, um, than PSVR 2. From what I'm understanding, as a standalone headset, it's supposed to have much more power than the Oculus Quest 2. Because right now, the Oculus Quest 2 has a Qualcomm, I think, XL2 chip in it. And at the time, it, that's a mobile chip. So basically... This Oculus Quest 2 has a mobile phone chip in it. And hence, that's why you get a lot of these games that have these rinky-dink Roblox-looking graphics. Now, from what I understand with Quest 3, it's going to have the latest chipset, and it's going to have the latest chip in there. It's going to be much more powerful than the Quest 2, so much to the point that some people think you might be able to play PC games on the Oculus Quest 3 as a standalone. But we also know that the Quest 3 is also going to be a PC VR headset as well. It is rumored that it will have um, eye tracking and pancake lenses. I do think that the tracking is probably going to be a little bit better on the Quest 3. I say that because right now the Quest Pro has 10 cameras. Let me show you this um, Quest 2. You see, um, it's hard for you guys to see it. But these black dots on the Quest 2 are cameras. There's a camera here, a camera here, and then there's a camera there, and a camera... Um, oh, Actually, I was looking in the wrong spots. Here's a camera here, a camera here, and then like, um, she's I got it so bright you guys can't see the two, uh, a camera right there, that black dot right there, and another camera right there. So in any case, this headset has four cameras. The Oculus Quest Pro, this out right now, has a total of ten cameras. 
It has four cameras on the headset. It actually has um it actually has 14 cameras. It has the four it has the four um cameras on the outside. It has two cameras on the inside for eye tracking. So the headset's got six cameras and then the controllers have three cameras each. So it makes for superior tracking. So assuming that that same tracking is used on the Quest 3, I think the Quest 3 will have better tracking than PSVR 2. But other than that, I don't I don't know what much I don't know what more they would be able to do in uh you know from a PC VR standpoint. So um but I'll get it. Did my phone die yet? Yep, my phone officially died. Because when you guys type a comment, you see it right there displaying on the corner of the screen. But if you type a really long comment, it doesn't show the entire comment. So whenever you guys type really long comments, I had to look at it on my phone. And it looks like the phone died. So, uh, so I guess that's the cue to wrap this up here pretty soon. So, um, but I do want to say that, you know, a couple of my friends are streaming right now. Check out Jonathan Clifford. He was in the um, chat a little while ago. This young man is very fast. His channel is growing. Um, and this man is fast enough to compete with the aliens. Um, to give you an example, on Silverstone, I might be able to, if I'm having a super great lap, I can do that, lap, I can do that in two minutes. He does it in like a minute 57. So this young man is alien fast. So if you want to see a set of Corsa Competizione sim racing, check out Jonathan Clifford. I believe he's streaming right now. And when he streams, he streams for hours. I mean, I've seen him do eight-hour streams. Um, my friend Sick Humor, he's live right now. Uh, he does a variety of things. Uh, he plays games. He does podcasts. I think he's streaming right now. I think he might be playing something with Jay Bari. So if you want to check him out, I think he's streaming live right now. Uh, always uh, keep up with the round table. My friend um, King Thrash, uh, who hosts the round table, currently um, he is putting together the first ever Gamers Choice Awards, where it is going to be an awards platform created by the people for the people. And uh, as soon as I get a chance, I will get the links where you can vote. On various topics, best the best Xbox game, best PlayStation game, uh, uh, best sim racing game, which I will be doing the presentation for that. Uh, along and then um, uh, a lot of my YouTube friends have come together on this, uh, so it is going to be a huge event. So I will keep you guys posted on that. So, but if you already subscribed to King Thrash then you already know what's going on with the awards, uh, the Gamers' Choice Awards. So just stay tuned for more information on that. Um, and then I think uh, for your VR needs, check out some of my other friends, uh, Paradise Decay, uh, Gamertag VR, uh, Ham VR. Um, I think he's been busy with work lately, but uh, you definitely want to check him out. And so I think that's uh, going to do it for me. Uh, other, other, my friends, other my uh, my YouTube friends that you can check out is Craig, the tech guy. He was in here earlier. Um, he likes to do podcasts, giving you the latest um, gaming news. What's going on primarily with Microsoft and Sony? Uh, Douglas Thompson. He's uh, likes to do rally racing. Uh, he's done reviews on numerous products, Fanatec, Camus, because um, he's been sent products by those companies. Uh, he does a lot of rally racing. He does occasionally does uh, some VR streaming. 
he has a motion rig as well. So, um, so if you want to see some rally racing on a motion rig, along with some other uh, content, check out Douglas Thompson. So I think, oh, and lastly, uh, my other friend, Jess Boris. Um, he's another guy that sim races, and what drew me to his channel is um, he does a set of Corsa Competizione, but he does it on the Series X. And when I found his channel, I was wondering, can people on console be just as fast as the people on PC? And so I was going through channels of people who do ACC on PS5 and Xbox Series X, and I came across Boris's channel, and I had been watching him because he's fast. Uh, he's an older guy. I think he's uh, not too far off from me. I'm 55 years old. I think Boris is around 50. Uh, he's fast. I think he's um, I think he's Irish. Um, he races on both PC and Series X, but I think he prefers to race on Series X. His channel's called Just Boris. Uh, check him out as well. So, and I think that's about all the people that I can think of. So go check those peoples out uh, for your various gaming needs. And uh, with that, I think I'm going to get ready to boogie on out of here. My phone's dead. My voice is scratchy. I'm hungry, thirsty, all that good stuff. I want to thank you all for watching. Although I did have a funny thought come across my head. Um, I thought about, uh, I've got two other channels. I got a Twitch channel, and I have another VR channel called The Godfather of VR. And The Godfather of VR, my intentions with that channel was to stream everything else VR. I plan to do sim racing and VR sim racing on this channel, but The Godfather of VR is everything else VR. And I was in the middle of streaming Medal of Honor on there. I'm, in, I'm about 75% finished with that game. I kind of think I want to finish it this weekend. So I might stream it. So keep that in mind too. The Godfather of VR. Uh, that channel, what you'll see is the profile pic is me. I'm, I'm wearing a hat, uh, a vest, and a tie um, with a purple shirt on. And in the background is a cage with a tiger in it. Um, so look, so if you want to, um, so yeah, I'm thinking about streaming Medal of Honor and, and finish that off because I don't go back to work until Tuesday. So I'm thinking about, you know, maybe later on this evening, do a little bit of Medal of Honor on the Godfather of VR channel. So, uh, keep that in mind too. So, or another thing you could, or, or what you could do is just, um, if I should decide to stream it. Keep an eye on this channel, and I'll post something in the community tab, and I'll put a link in the community tab to the other channel, and then you can come check me out playing uh, Medal of Honor in VR. So with that, I know I'm definitely done now. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching. This has really, really been fun, and that's one of the things I like about my channel, not being too big, is that I can interact with everybody. I can, I can answer just about any comment that I see. I mean, who wouldn't want to do YouTube for a living and get paid for something that you love to do? But at the same time, you know, I, I enjoy being able to interact with everybody. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I like my channel the way it is right now. So uh, thank you all for watching. And, um, and we will see you all on the next one. So one way, shape, or form, I will do something here within the next 12 hours. <laughs> and so I think I'm going to go ahead and hang it up. And uh, we'll see you on the next stream. Until then, uh, you all know the line. Uh, listen to my voice. You all know the line. <laughs> Wakanda forever. Long live the king and deuces. Happy New Year, everybody. Have a good one. We will see you all soon.